Hi guys and welcome to the part 2 of this Streamlit series. In the previous video, we saw what Streamlit is and how to set it up on your PC. And finally, we created a basic application which allowed us to display Hello Streamlit. In this video, we will be seeing the different ways in which you can add text to your application. So in the last video, I created this demo.py file. So now I have added this a demo.py file to my project folder and I have also created a virtual environment for this project. I'll recommend you all to create a virtual environment so that you only have the packages which you need in the environment and this will all also help us when we deploy our application on Heroku. If you don't know how to create a virtual environment or how to use a virtual environment, I have already made a video on it and I will add the link to that video in the description box. So let's start with the script that we created in the last video. Over here, we have already used our first way to add text to the app that is using the title command. So as the name suggests, title command is used to add title to your web application. So over here, we have added hello streamlit. So this is the title which is given to our web application and in the document it is recommended that you use this title command only once for your application though it is not enforced so after adding the title your app might require headers and subheaders so streamlit provides us with two levels of headers the first one is header and the other one is subheader so to add headers to your application you need to type the command st.headers and then type the header you want to enter and then for subheader you need to type st.subheader and then again whatever subheader you want to give I'll save this file and over here, you see we got the header and the subheader. So after adding subheaders and headers, you need to actually add some text to your application. So to add text to your application, we have a command which is st.text and then you provide the text you want to enter. So I type like this video and right to the channel and save this so over here you see we got this text that we entered so this is a pre-formatted text and you cannot change the font or the styling of this text so to add customization to your text we can use the markdown command which displays the string formatted as markdown and similarly we also have a command latex which allows us to display the text formatted as latex so let's see how you can use them so i'll just go to my script and type sp.markdown and then i'll use triple quotes over here and so now you can use the markdown syntax so i'll begin with adding a header you can add a header by typing hash and this would be equivalent to the h1 header of HTML. So I'll type h1 tag. And if you type double hash, it would be h2 tag. And similarly, the hash would be h3 tag. And if I save this, so you can see we got the h1 tag and h2 tag and the h3 header tag. So similarly, you can use, you can add emojis to your uh, application. To add them, you need to type. Um, so let's say if I want to add moon emoji, so I'll type moon and save this. And we got this moon emoji over here. Similarly, if I want sunglasses, I'll just type sunglasses and save this. So we got this. So you can also use HTML inside this. So 
like if I want to use break line over here and to use this tag inside your markdown you need to pass another argument which would be true because by default the markdown command reads all the tags as a text so once you have passed true you see the break line work and this emoji got shifted to the new line so there are some shortcuts to make your text bold so if you use double asterisk and type something between them so this would make this text bold over here you see this got bold and then you can use underscores to make your text italics so over you see italic so this is a cheat sheet which uh, has almost all the basic commands that you need for markdown so I'll attach the link to this page in the description box and now let's see how you can use latex so to use latex you need to type st dot latex so in latex command you can either pass a string or a simpa expression if you are passing a string then it would be a good idea to pass a raw python string since latex uses a lot of backslashes so i'll use a string over here so raw python strings so just to save time i'll just copy the code from the snippet and just put the over here and save this so now if we go over here we see this is the latex expression that we got so now we will be seeing the write command it is it performs different things depending upon the parameters that you enter in it unlike the previous command write has some unique properties so one of them is that you can pass in multiple arguments and all of them will be printed on the application second is that its behavior depends on the input type so let's see how you can use the write command so i'll go over to the script and type st dot write and over here i'll first pass multiple arguments so i'll type hersh gupta and python i'll save this and over here you see all the arguments got printed so you can use the markdown syntax inside the string and it will get printed so i'll use the header and save this and you see this was rendered as a markdown then you can pass a number of different things so you can pass in the module name so I have imported streamlet as st if I pass in st and save this so over here you see it shows the basic documentation about streamlet and similarly instead of a module if you pass a function so let's say i pass in sum so it will show how to use the sum and description about the sum you can also pass in dictionaries inside the write function so i'll copy this dictionary over here and pass it in this so if i save it now you see we got this dictionary printed in our application so you can also pass data frames and plots and it will display it onto your web application but we will see this in the later videos when we discuss about data frames and plotting so that's all for this video and i hope this video was helpful to you and in the next video we will be seeing how to load and display data onto your streamlit app and also we will go upon the topic of caching in streamlit Thank you all for watching the video and do like the video and subscribe to the channel.